time. It's live, and it's in the interest of the people. They're going to make you laugh, and they'll even make you mad enough to chew nails. Either way, they have you tuned in. So sit back in that easy chair and get close to a phone, because you can call and talk to them. You better get you something to drink, because you may need it also. Take it away, guys. We are in the interest of the people. We're here tonight again and have an exciting guest for you to hear and maybe get to ask some questions. I'm going to turn it over to the mayor. Thank you, Miss Charlotte. Welcome to our TV program. The phone is ringing. I'm trying to get my <laughs> wife on the phone. If she answers it, she sees me calling. She may not answer it. Today, we are celebrating 58 years of wedded bliss, whatever that means. She saw that I was calling, so yeah. she won't answer the phone. Well, I we're, want, I want to, I want to congratulate her. <laughs> oh, Wait, what's it, run, run it by me again. <laughs> I want to congratulate her for being such a tough person. Her? Mm -hmm. I mean. Yeah. What about me? putting up with you. <laughs> I, I, there, there she is. We'll, we'll get her on the phone in just there a minute she, if she'll, yeah. if she'll answer the phone. Uh, I took that old gal when she was about 16, 18 years old, and, and married her. Oh, I thought you were 16. I was, but she was <laughs> that bold. And I have worked with her for 58 years and got her to where she is. Yeah, I bet. It's been tough. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go back to her in just a little bit if I can get her on the phone. Uh, we do have a special guest, Senator McClellan. Uh, McClendon will be with us shortly. But uh, in the meantime, before I forget it, I want to share with you a couple of obituaries. We don't normally give out obituaries because there's always so many during the week. But since these are uh, happening on Monday, there's no paper on Monday, mm -hmm. we always try to work with the funeral homes. Uh, Miss Sarah Edmiston passed away today. Edmiston, she lived out on 34 for many years, and uh, she was living in one of the nursing homes in Anderson, I understand, but she passed away this afternoon. Tyler Funeral Home will be handling the funeral, and you can call them 256-362-0111 for further details. That's Sarah Edmiston. Uh, former resident of uh, 34. Mm -hmm. Rocky Washam, a longtime employee of Camp, Camp, and Camp. He did our audit at the city of Tyler for many, many years. Rocky was one of those kind of guys. You never heard anything negative about him. You never heard him say anything negative about him. He'd never been in politics. That's why he got such a good record, I guess. But Rocky was just a principal guy. And he passed away. The funeral will be at 1 p.m. tomorrow. It'll be a graveside ride at Pine Hill. Mausoleum visitation will be 11:30 to 12:30 at First Methodist Church in Talladega. That's Rocky Washam. Funeral will be on Monday at 1 o'clock at the uh, Pine Hill Mausoleum. Graveside service at 1 p.m. 11:30 to 12:30 visitation at First Methodist. Tomorrow, uh, Mr. Jewel Anthony Tony Nolan passed away. It is resident on Thursday. The uh, funeral will be Monday at Tyler Church of Christ in Tyler with Minister Ron Hurst, Fish Aid and Barrel following at Pine Hill Cemetery. That's at 2 p.m. Tyler Church of Christ on Monday. Mr. Jewel Anthony, better known as Tony Nolan or Nylon, N-O-W-L-A-N-D. And uh, we're, we're, uh, don't mind announcing these things for the, for the family. Don't forget Rehab First, one of our sponsors been with us forever. Any kind of rehab you could possibly need, they've got it. Rehab First at uh, McGuffey Healthcare in Gaston. They've got 24-hour uh, care, 24-hour answering service, seven days a week admission, private rooms, 24-hour RN coverage, wound care certified staff, and the list is in is what they have. Uh, if you need any kind of rehab, they can take care of you. They're long-time people that lives there and works there. First they're class. there to make a profit naturally, but they're also there to take care of you and your needs. They have long-term care, and some folks think I need it. But uh, <laughs> if you need, if you've been beat up on, uh, my wife has never really ever beat me up. She's come close. To She's three wanted times. to a few times. I wonder if you get in verbal abuse. Or can you get into nervous? I'm gonna help her. <laughs> <laughs> but Rehab First at McGovern Healthcare, they're there to serve anything you could possibly need. Can we show uh, the picture of the Alabama Institute for Blind, Deaf and Blind picture? Uh, thanks to Mr. Johnny McKinnon, he put this on the internet, and we pulled it off, and our engineers have got it tuned in. See if you can pull this up and let them hear the Alabama Institute for Blind uh, singing the Christmas recently.
Christmas time is coming. It won't be long either. That's the Alabama Institute for Blind. If you've never had an opportunity to visit Alabama Institute for Deaf and Blind and, and tour the facility, you don't know what you miss. Wow. They're our largest employee in our city and the second largest in the county. And uh, we're proud to be the home of Alabama Institute for Deaf and Blind. They mean so much to us. Yes, if you ever get a chance to visit the Helen Keller School and watch the children sing and perform, uh, that'll, that'll warm you up quick, I guarantee. We appreciate Johnny McKinnon putting this on Facebook. Uh, we, we got one thing we want to share with you. It, uh, it's bad, but uh, we, we, uh, we feel like you need to see this. And, and uh, I don't believe in, in violence, but I think I could probably take the people who did this and, and do the men and feel good about it and ask the good Lord to forgive me. But if we can show this picture of this Mississippi girl, this young lady right here, she was uh, 19 years old. Someone has taken her out and they squirted uh, fluid, on her lighter fluid or whatever, down her throat mm -hmm. and up her nose and then set her on fire and, and burned her alive. Uh, whoever did this, when they catch them, nothing is, is too bad for them. This is all uncalled for. I, like I said, I don't believe in vigilante violence. I don't think. But in a case like this, I might could justify it. Uh, her mother said she spoke with her daughter on the phone around 648. Jessica told her mother she was going to get a bite to eat. And uh, that's the last time they heard from her, saw her. These people she have did, uh, they said she did try to tell them who did this to her. And mm -hmm. I don't know if they actually did, if they understood what she said. But uh, I'm telling you what, folks, there's some, there's a place there's some bad on. stuff in society <laughs> going on. Show you one other thing before we go to break, and then we'll go to our, our senator. Do we have the picture of Marshall Pope? Uh, he was he was on its Talladega Friday, mm -hmm. and uh, he's one of our young men here in Talladega. Super nice guy. We've been knowing him all of his life. Know his dad, uh, Mr. Marshall, Miss Joyce Pope, mm -hmm. mother, and uh, he he wrote a poem. He wrote four books. He's written four books, and he did a poem, "Who Am I?" And, and I want you to. We want to play this a little bit. He'll be on again tomorrow, uh, Tuesday at, uh, I don't recall the time, and then Wednesday. But play Marshall uh, doing his Who Am I? And uh, also I want to recite my first poem I ever wrote. Go ahead. You know, it's called Who Am I? 16 years old. Who am I? Where is my home? In a world surrounded by millions, yet I feel alone. Am I alive? Am I dead? Are my dreams on the fantasies of the confusion in my head? Can I not love? What makes one hate? Unanswered questions as these have destroyed my fate. So I am denied to feel with this thing called the heart. If life is so precious, then why must it be so short? For wealth we kill, cheat, and lie. In this bought and sold world, is there nothing money can buy? Only two words describes my dreams, wishes, and hopes. Life or death, why can't I choose both? I am only a shadow of my own existence. The only passion I feel is the passion for revenge. This world has mocked me through my experience with pain. There's no more I can lose and no more I can gain. When my spirit leaves the ground for a journey to the sky, may we all meet again in our next lives. Who am I? He's something. <laughs> I tell you what, uh, he, is a, he is an asset to our city. Marshall, we appreciate you being what you are. Appreciate your family, and, and young people. If you want a role model, Marshall Pope is a role model. Some of these folks that you're running around after, seeking fame and fortune or whatever, uh, you, you're headed for shipwreck. You need to, to look after people, look at the people that like Marshall Pope, and pattern your life after them. We've got to go to break shortly, but the Emancipation Proclamation program, January the fourth at Ritz Theater, the Reverend Cromwell A. Handy. We'll be the guest speaker. We'll be talking more about that uh, as time progresses. Also, Lieutenant John Williams has been named interim fire chief in Sylacauga. We compliment the uh, mayor and, and all the folks who appointed Lieutenant John Williams to be the new fire chief. He'll do a good job, and uh, we appreciate all the folks in our Sylacauga area. Got to go to break, and when we come back, we will be talking to Senator, our new senator. Uh, don't you go anywhere. Planning a get-together, sporting event, or special occasion, let CG's help make the event more enjoyable. CG's can advise you on a favorite champagne or special wine imported from all over the world, as well as from New York and California. Perhaps you'd rather choose a muscadine wine from Alabama. CG's also has a nice selection of the latest in stemless wine glasses or champagne and water glasses. Only at CG's can you obtain your favorite imported beer. 
40 supplies, mixes, and a variety of nuts. By the way, don't forget a gift for your favorite hostess. Visit CG's conveniently located in Talladega at the corner of Howard and West. A death is a troubling time for any family. Talladega Funeral Home offers dignity, respect, professionalism, commitment, and fairness to all families in need. We listen carefully. We know that some of us find great comfort in traditions, and we work tirelessly to honor those traditions. Our professional team gets to know each and every family member to help each and every individual remember, share, and also move towards healing. Contact Brittany Boozer at Talladega Funeral Home today, 256-362-0111. Talladega Funeral Home. We care because every life has a story. Have you tried one of these? It's so good. Hey, and I can't believe we haven't done this before. Oh, wow, look at that. What a bike. Oh, you're aging. Do, do, do the jingle. Do the jingle. Like a good neighbor. State Farm is there. Hey, guys. Oh, oh. Uh, do it again. Do it again. Like a good neighbor. State Farm is there. In my office. State Farm. I think we're good. <laughs> State Farm agents are there when you need them. <laughs> you like that? <laughs> I do like that commercial. If I could superimpose Doug Kemp's head on that guy in the back seat. Yeah, that'd be great. That's all we need. Cool. Are you there, darling? I'm here. Did you refuse to answer the phone while ago when you saw I was calling? I didn't even know what number it was. I was telling people that you and I have been happily married 10 years, and that ain't bad out of 58. <laughs> well, I, I think I counted less than that. I'm not sure. <laughs> there, you're on the screen. Are you watching television? No, no, no I don't need to ask that. There you are on, there you are on the screen. I see you. Okay, we were up at the uh, museum, I guess it was last year, and the photographer with a race uh, track snapped this picture of Mayor sitting there. I'm not sure where her mind was. I don't know what she was thinking about, a divorce? Or what? <laughs> <laughs> but he gave us a copy of this picture. It's, it's a very great uh, picture of you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Have you got any kind words you'd like to say about me or our anniversary or anything? I mean, don't be nasty now. Okay. Well, I really enjoyed the anniversary gift that you gave me today. <laughs> uh, we went to Sneaky Peas and put a hot dog in the hall. I get a board now that we retired. <laughs> And, 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 I, and I told her, and I told her, if, I told her and I told her if the next 58 years was was proved successful, I would take I would take her back 58 years again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. Looking but, forward to but it. But in all all seriousness, I tell you what, this gal here is is stuck through me, stuck, stuck with me through thick and thin. Three and a half years in the army, three and a half years in prison. Uh, every time I came back home, she was still there, and and uh, she she's hung in there with me. You can't get rid of it, she, She's been a good one. I moved several times. She keeps finding me. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I have never heard anybody say anything negative about Mary. She's, well, she's just one of those kind of ladies that has worked hard all of our married life. She's helped make a living. She's, we've gone through thick and thin. We've been times in our life, and people don't believe this, but we didn't even have a dime for an ice cream. And she's hung in there. Well, but, we, you know, we married early. We married young. I was 16. Of course, we've had some valleys and of course I count the mountaintops uh, as a blessing because you and I have been blessed by the Lord. We met in church and uh, It was a sin to even hold hands in those days. Now nothing's oh, a sin. Yes, it was. <laughs> <laughs> I told someone when I married her she was belonged to the Holiness Church. Still does. <laughs> but she didn't believe in rings, short hair, short dresses, lipstick, nothing. I think she backslid now she can't get enough rings. <laughs> Honey, I've got already got a chocolate diamond picked out. Oh, Lord. Thank you, buddy. <laughs> Lot, I appreciate you being with us. Happy anniversary. Right. Love you, Lot. Love See you. When you get home. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye. <laughs> She's been Bye. a good one. <laughs> Senator, welcome. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Have you been married quite that long? <clears throat> no, not 58 years. I certainly have <laughs> not. And it doesn't seem like it either, so. It doesn't seem like it's been... <laughs> no, it doesn't Someone seem... asked me one time, have you ever considered divorce? I said, no, I'll murder a lot of times. <laughs> never, <laughs> never divorced. Now, she's been a good one. It's good to have you with us. Well, it's just great to be here. I know you and I have talked about this uh, visit for a long time, and we finally made it happen here. What is it, 11 days till Christmas? I My know. goodness. Yeah. The uh, school, the the blind, the school for the blind children while they were singing. Uh, I, have you? I don't know if you had a chance to go through the whole I, school or not, but I have. I went over with Dr. Massey and made a tour, 
it was during a break time, so we didn't have students around. And, and I've got, and I'm planning on making the trip back when it's occupied, so if I can see all chance, the kids. If you're not going through the industry for the blind, that alone is worth the trip. I, I've been over there, and, and I watched. Here's amazing. what's amazing: those blind people sewing a at machine? 90 miles an hour. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, golly, how do they keep their fingers? I, I, okay. I couldn't. I'd, I'd sew my fingers together. I, but it, I was very impressed with uh, with that operation, what they're doing. And you know those people are working for a living. They're, they're not. They're not taking a handout. They're they're making well, a I, handout. Well, I appreciate what you and, and the house and the Senate does to to keep the the, the uh, facility afloat. Were it not for the Alabama Institute for Deaf and Blind, you're right. We would have probably have many blind folks on the street corner with a cup. I remember sure. back in the older days, back in the late 40s and 50s, when you would see them begging on the street. Well, don't see that today. But that it's. It's such, it's an inspiration to yeah. go see what they do, how they do it, yeah. and the pride the people take right. in what they do. They own their homes. Uh, they they marry sighted ladies in a lot of cases, women marry sighted men. They have children to drive. They have a car. Well, um, it's, it's a great institution. And you talked about the support the state provides for that. Um, I, I, I made a commitment to them that I'm going to do my best to to maintain that support and do what I can to increase that support. I appreciate that. And and we have another institute, Talladega College. I have means, not been to Talladega College. If, if you haven't <clears throat> been up there and heard that choir and heard that, they started, Dr. Ha Dr. Hawkins came to school, uh, came to town about six years ago and didn't have a band and had a, 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 a choir, didn't have any sports to mount anything. He, in three years, he's gone from no band to almost a 300 member band. They're awesome. They're being recruited all over the United States to come play in parades and different functions and so forth. The choir is awesome. Uh, they've got professional, not professional, they've got ball teams that are winning uh, uh, all kind of championships. Basketball. Basketball, baseball. It's awesome. It's awesome. Matter of fact, someday when you got time, if you holler, we'll, we'll call the doc and go up there and, and, and eat lunch with him. Now, did I see oldest college? What's the, what's the deal? Tell me about that. Uh, old, uh, oldest <coughs> college in the state. Is that right? Maybe in the United States, I'm not sure Maybe. about that, but it's yeah. uh, it's it's uh, history a lot it? of history up there. We have a lot of folks who've gone and educated in Tyler College, and have gone on to become doctors and professional people. Mm -hmm. It's it's awesome, but uh, we can't thank you enough for uh, for your support of, of of all our industry and all of our industries and all of our entities. But uh, I, I'm very I, I knew who you was before the election. Never had really got acquainted with you, but I have to commend you for your approachability. Your accessibility, you do return phone calls. That's a pet peeve with me. Yeah. Uh, it bothers me when a politician tells you what he's going to do for you, but then he don't return your calls when he gets elected. This man returns your phone calls. Well, Mayor, I was trained by my patients. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what that's right. you do. Mm -hmm. So well, we want to talk a, bit, I, I a little had, bit about uh, yeah, uh, Dr. McClellan. 30 years of that, and you return your patients' phone calls, right. and so I'm still in the habit, don't know better. I, when I first went in office, I was surprised at the people when I returned a call that said that they were surprised that I returned a call. <laughs> I hear that all the time. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 my wife and I are nuts about newspaper articles, and when we have Opal uh, Stone, another lady that helped me during my three years in office, Charlotte and Opal, the mayor don't have an expense account, and, and I have a position and an office and that's it. Uh, and and I can type and I can do a computer, but Charlotte agreed to help me in the mayor's office and also co-host on a TV program. And Opal Stone, and she takes these articles and laminates them for me, and we send them out to the folks' mm -hmm. obituaries and good things in the paper. And, and without Opal Stone and Charlotte Green, I'd have, of course my wife, she's always been there, but uh, she has not been involved directly as much as these two ladies have. And without them, uh, you know, we couldn't have done all we've done. Sure. But I I'm a nut about that. returning my phone calls. Well, I do it. I'm in the phone book. I am too. Not hard to find. And I give my cell phone number out all the time. You, yeah. If you can't reach me, I said, call the police station. They always know where I am. <laughs> One way go, or the other. <laughs> <laughs> we got to go to break. Just, uh, is, okay, we've got two things coming up this week. The Polar Express, December the 19th, Friday night, December the 19th. This is a benefit for First Family Service Center, Historic Ridge Theater, Courthouse Square. Tickets $10. This is the ultimate Christmas experience. Uh, it's a, this is a screening of film classic, The Polar Express. That's this coming Friday night, December the 19th. On December the 20th, 
The Joy of Christmas, a benefit concert from Becky's Dream and Friends featuring Kenny Robertson. And that, I'm not going to name all the folks. But uh, this is going to be at the Historic Ritz Theater. All proceeds benefit Children's Hospital Pediatric Unit. That's Saturday, December the 20th, 7 p.m. Tickets, $10. If you can, go out and support these. Uh, Monday night, we went up and heard the jazz concert. Great, the Ritz Theater. Tuesday night, we went up and heard Tyler College Choir. Fantastic, good crowd, great crowd. And tonight, or this afternoon, we went up and heard the First Baptist Church Choir. Awesome. They had an orchestra. I'm not sure where all this orchestra came from. But I'm telling you, folks, if you missed the First Baptist Church uh, cantata, whatever you call it, it was an awesome day. We did so much stuff going on in Talladega, and uh, we're, just, we're just proud. I've got to go to break and be right back with Dr. McClendon. Senator McClendon. Planning a get-together, sporting event, or special occasion, let CG's help make the event more enjoyable. CG's can advise you on a favorite champagne or special wine imported from all over the world, as well as from New York and California. Perhaps you'd rather choose a muscadine wine from Alabama. CG's also has a nice selection of the latest in stemless wine glasses or champagne and water glasses. Only at CG's can you obtain your favorite imported beer, party supplies, mixes, and a variety of nuts. By the way, don't forget a gift for your favorite hostess. Visit CG's, conveniently located in Talladega at the corner of Howard and West. A death is a troubling time for any family. Talladega Funeral Home offers dignity, respect, professionalism, commitment, and fairness to all families in need. We listen carefully. We know that some of us find great comfort in traditions, and we work tirelessly to honor those traditions. Our professional team gets to know each and every family member to help each and every individual remember, share, and also move towards him. Contact Brittany Boozer at Talladega Funeral Home today, 256-362-0111. Talladega Funeral Home. We care because every life has a story. Have you tried one of these? It's so good. Hey, and I can't believe we haven't done this before. Oh, wow, look at that. What a bike. Oh, you're aging. Do the jingle. Do the jingle. Like a good neighbor. Stay Farm is there. Hey, guys. Uh, do it again. Do it again. Like a good neighbor. Stay Farm is there. In my office. Stay Farm. I think we're good. <laughs> State Farm agents are there when you need them. Welcome back. While we're off the air, Jeff called in, a graduate Helen Keller School. Of course, Jeff calls every week. He can sneak in. If you don't get him by <laughs> his voice, he'll change his voice on you mm -hmm. and sneak in. But I gave him Senator McClendon's birthday date. And he told him right quick what day of the week he comes. He said, how does he do that? I said, I don't know. <laughs> he just does it, and he ne he'll never forget his birth date. Mm -hmm. Jeff has got a photographic mind that once he knows your birth date, he'll either send you a card or call you up, or he, he never forgets it. Awesome. A graduate of Helen Keller School. That's just another product of our institute. Let's talk about Senator Mc uh, McClendon. What do you want to talk about? You. Where did you come from? How did you okay. get to where you are? And a doctor? You went to school? And, yeah. And okay. uh, can you share that you went to one of the universities? Or are you? Uh, well, I come from Springville, Alabama, and in fact, I live on the. That's in Saint Clair. It used to be called Saint, Saint Clair County. Now they call it Saint Clair County. It's Saint Clair County. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that's where I grew up, and and in fact, my my granddaughter lives in the house next door to me, which is. The house my daddy was born in, and she is the seventh generation um, to live on that property. Um, so we know we know where home is. I went to Springville High School. From there, I went to Birmingham Southern College. I didn't uh, I didn't do either one of the universities. I went to Birmingham Southern, did my undergraduate there, and then it's a great school. Yeah, uh, it, mm -hmm. it is a great school. It really prepared me for optometry school when I went to University of Houston. And then after University of Houston was uh, three years in the U.S. Navy. I was a Navy doctor. Did uh, one year of that was a Vietnam year. Oh. And uh, let me thank you for your service well, to, to the thank, thank you. military. Thank you. It, you know, it was very much. Uh, Mash used to be on television. I used to watch <laughs> Mash, and and uh, it was very much like that. We didn't have tents. We had Quonset huts, but it was pretty primitive. A helicopter would land with patients, and the doors to the operating room would blow open. So, wow. but uh, after that, I went into private practice. I went in with my dad. I taught at the university, at the medical center, at the school there for six years, and then private practice, and then. Uh, 12 years ago, 13 years ago, I decided I needed to be in the legislature. I, 
I had a problem and I went to my representative and um, he couldn't or wouldn't help me and it it was one of those deals to if you want to do it do it right you do it yourself so I ran mm -hmm. and um, that was that was my first foray into politics but I won and then so I've served three terms in the Alabama House so 12 years and um, and then recently was elected to the Alabama Senate so and I feel like I'm, I'm definitely ready for the Senate I've certainly got a good bit of experience married to the former L. Tate of Arab, Alabama. I have one daughter that lives next door and a granddaughter. And um, we live at a barn. Well, I think we've got some pictures. Mr. Engineer, if you can, pull those pictures yeah, up and actually, let's, uh, I, I, let the senator decipher some of them. Yeah, go. okay, now that is. There's a, your barn. That's a barn, there's no <laughs> doubt about it. Uh, pe I tell people we live in a barn and they don't believe it. The horses are downstairs, we're upstairs. and. Um, uh, that's another shot of it. There's a, There's a couple of your dogs. Yes, yeah, a couple of Aussie dogs we got there. That's inside. Oh, that's wow. I see your piano. I, I yeah. play the piano. Your wife plays the piano. My so. wife, my wife does play the piano, and beautiful, uh, and the fiddle, and she she plays the quilter. That's a that's a ham radio antenna on one end of the barn there. That was a major operation getting that baby up. And right, there's horses. That's uh, Ace and Pepper. Uh, the one on the left, uh, and the that's a good I, shot. There. I, isn't that a great shot? Yes, I love sir. that. That was a fe February last year snow or January, whenever it was. Well, one of them's, uh, and that's Baxter. Uh, <laughs> and going on for free ride. Yeah, Baxter <laughs> uh, just hopped on, and that, that's my wife and dogs and one of the neighbor's dogs and a neighbor dog joining <laughs> in. Uh, that was on her birthday. She was out riding uh, Asa around. Now that was our honeymoon. That was in the Amazon. All right. Oh, that was a strange thing. That's a peacock bass she's holding, and uh, I've got one in that lower. You got one coming up next. You got one. Yeah. I believe you holding the big one. Well, let's see what I else think. we got Maybe. Up there. Yeah. Well, that's, now she's a quilter. She does. Uh, she's a serious quilter. Does she do it on the old loom, or does she uh, have a machine to do she's it? She got a machine. And then that's a, she's also a shooter. We're regulars at Selwood, I'm telling you. Dale Hill, uh, Selwood. Yeah, we see Dale all the time, maybe too much, but uh, <laughs> she's regular out there. That was signing the uh, ethics bill in 2010. I was chairman of the only committee in that special session, which was the ethics committee. I was very proud of that. Uh, we really changed. We changed the culture. Uh, I, I know a lot of folks may not believe that, but. We certainly changed the way things were done in Montgomery. And that's not to say that there's not more work to be done on that issue. Um, but uh, I was proud of that. That's a view off of one of the decks off of our house. That's How much land do you have there, if you don't mind me asking? We've got 120 acres. 100, that's a lot, a lot to cover there to push more in. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I've got my granddaughter. There oh, you go. Oh, okay. That was, a, that was a private pond. The guy told me, he said, uh, you know, if you tell anybody where you caught this fish, uh, you're going to have to go ahead and just shoot them. What was, it, what was that boy, about 20 pounds? I, I don't 15? know. I know it got bigger as the day went on. Uh, <laughs> and, you, and every time you tell it, it gets bigger? Uh, yeah. Well, fortunately, I didn't have any scales with me. That's my granddaughter. That's Natalie. She's playing soccer. Uh, Spring was going to have a soccer team What oh, great high school. She is... Why don't you ask, you ask personal <laughs> questions? She's in the 10th grade. 10th grade okay. She's in the 10th grade. But, uh, and that's Natalie. She was about, four, that was 01, so she was about 14 at that time. We were diving in the Bahamas together. We've, got, we've done that trip several years in a row. We're both divers. That's a big old fish mama. behind you there. That is a large shark fish. Shark or a... Uh, yeah, that's called a reef shark. Uh -uh. And they're, uh -huh. they're, they're not noted for eating people. <laughs> uh, so, Do they know that? <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> so far. Uh, oh, that was at the Supreme Court. That was just a few weeks ago. Yeah, That's a yeah, uh, big Luther yeah. and uh, Senator, Senator Dial in the middle and uh, the new Senator McClendon on the right there. But we had a case that went before the Supreme Court, and uh, that was a most interesting experience. I feel very fortunate that I got to participate. This is on the that, redistricting. This was on redistricting of House and Senate districts here in Alabama. Uh, this is in Montgomery? 
No, that's in Washington. Oh, in Washington, the Supreme. That's, okay, that's the Washington the Supreme, Supreme Court. Court. Yeah, that's the Supreme Court. We'd been to federal district court in Montgomery, Judge Pryor's court, the year before, and then it got appealed. Uh, he upheld our, uh, he and his three judge panel upheld the case, but it got appealed and it went to the Supreme Court. So, and we're still waiting. No telling when they'll rule. They rule whenever they want to right. rule. If, if they rule in your favor or in favor of the, the lower courts, uh, does it go any farther? That's it. What if they rule Here, against it? Here's, here's, let me tell you about the Supreme Court. Here's a fact. They may not be right, but they're last. So <laughs> they, once they rule, whatever. That's, that's it. it. I, that's it. They make the decision. Now, mm -hmm. if they rule against us, they could send parts of Yeah, that's my firewood stack. We heat with wood at home. You cut your own firewood? I do. I cut every bit of it myself. I, well, you got a lot over there. Yeah, there well, well in, in my house, now we got central air and heat in that barn, but in my house, it's a sign of weakness to touch the thermostat. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we uh, we keep a fire. There's a fire going when I left, and there'll be one going when My I get wife back. Loves the fire. We've always had a fireplace. We we went to a gas logs when we built this new house we've got there, and, and it's not working properly right now. So we've got one of these Amish heaters. Uh, I don't know if you've seen one of them or not. I don't even know what that is. It's oh, an electric yeah, heater. They, nice. they do a great job. Really? They, they throw the heat out there. Yeah. Well, it's probably a lot easier than cutting firewood. And, or, <laughs> and shoveling the ashes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is a good yeah. picture. Back on the redistricting, yeah. uh, they, they may rule next week. It may be next when God comes back. You know, it's up to them. I, somebody said, I think it was one of the reporters, and how he would know that a ruling might be expected this summer. And if they... If they don't uphold the lower courts, as you put it, they could remand some of the districts back to the uh, federal court in Montgomery for further study to see if there was uh, racial bias. And that's what it's all about. You can redraw the districts for partisan reasons, but you can't do it for racial reasons. So, uh, and that's, that was the heart of the case, is was this done uh, racially, and, and the truth of the matter is, about 25% of our population in Alabama is minority, and about 25% of the number of legislators is minority. So if you're looking at it from the big picture, uh, I think we covered our bases. We did it, uh, Senator Dobbs in the, was, did the Senate districts, I did the House districts, and every, every move we made, we had a, an attorney standing right beside us that was familiar with redistricting laws. Mm -hmm. And we basically every move we made, we said, now, now how's that going to look to the Department of Justice? And, did the uh, Department of Justice pre-clear this or did, or yes, did they have to? This, they did, was, this was pre-cleared in, normally when they in pre record time. Normally when they pre-clear something, it's pretty well scrutinized. And, most of the time. Well, I presume, but we we got it out of DOJ. Uh, in fact, we had all four. We did uh, uh, board of state board of education. We did the congressional districts. Uh, that was 2011, I guess. Yep. Yeah. And in 2012, we did the House and Senate districts, and we got all four of those back in a in record time uh, from what had been done in the past out of DOJ with their stamp of approval on it. Mm -hmm. But the uh, plaintiffs, the people on the other side, they have every right in the world to carry it to the highest, the nation's highest court right. to make sure that we were, what we did was done properly and fairly and we treated everybody with uh, respect. And we just tuned in, we're talking with Senator McClendon, our new senator for Talladega, St. Clair and St. Clair, Shelby, and Talladega. Shelby, I, Not necessarily in that order. I was in. But now, folks, you that don't know this, this time around, we're going to have four senators representing Talladega. Normally, just have one and two representatives. Now, we're going to have four reps and four senators. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure how that's going to work out. But uh, <laughs> I feel good about having Senator McClendon. Mm -hmm. he's, he's been down there for many years. He knows everyone down there. He has a good rapport with the other three senators that's gonna be representing Talladega, and all we want is all there is and then some. <laughs> <laughs> well, the Eartha Kitt. Fair enough. Earth the Kitt singing. You, know, you remember Eartha Kitt, the, the black singer? Yeah, what she, I she remember. She wrote a song, All I Want Is All There Is and Then Some. <laughs> well, there that's you go. That's all we want. That's your fair share and more. <laughs> right. well, we won't be fair about this Well, thing, see, I, I go along with that. I mean, that's my job, right? What, uh, 
We've got several questions we want to ask him. We'll talk All right, about. go ahead. I, I have not asked him, ask a senator, but uh, if a man wants to call and ask a question, make a, you have a problem with it? No, 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 no. 256-369-1688, if you'd like to call in and compliment the senator, ask him a question about things that are coming up next year or whatever, just be nice. Be respectful, no bad language, and but you can ask whatever you want to. Got to go to break and be right back. Caught him off guard. Having a get-together sporting event or special occasion, let CGs help make the event more enjoyable. CGs can advise you on a favorite champagne or special wine imported from all over the world, as well as from New York and California. Perhaps you'd rather choose a muscadine wine from Alabama. CGs also has a nice selection of the latest in stemless wine glasses or champagne and water glasses. Only at CGs can you obtain your favorite imported beer, party supplies, mixes, and a variety of nuts. By the way, don't forget a gift for your favorite hostess. Visit CG's, conveniently located in Talladega at the corner of Howard and West. A death is a troubling time for any family. Talladega Funeral Home offers dignity, respect, professionalism, commitment, and fairness to all families in need. We listen carefully. We know that some of us find great comfort in traditions, and we work tirelessly to honor those traditions. Our professional team gets to know each and every family member to help each and every individual remember, share, and also move towards him. Contact Brittany Boozer at Talladega Funeral Home today, 256-362-01. Tidy a funeral home. We care because every life has a story. Have you tried one of these? It's so good. Man, I can't mm -hmm. believe we haven't done this before. Oh wow, look at that. Do the jingle! Do the jingle! Like a good neighbor, stay farm is there! Hey guys. Uh, do it again, do it again. Like a good neighbor, stay farm is there! In my office! Stay farm. I think we're good. <laughs> State Farm agents are there when you need them. You just can We're back. <laughs> We're going to do the birthdays right quick. we got a list. I've got to be fast because uh, there's a long list. Mickey Ferguson. Channel 6, that's Mr. Yes. Mike Ferguson's son. Our friend George Culver. Our friend Wes Patterson. Sandra Turner. Dwayne Player. Dwayne Wigan. Jamie Wheeler. Daryl Weaver. Uh, Wesley Allen. Sean Osborne McClellan, Danny and Charlotte Hubbard, happy birthday. And Christy Stone and Josh Jackson, happy birthday to all of you. Did you get all those? I did. Yeah. Happy birthday. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm, I'm listening here and trying to keep my focus here. Uh, we had a caller call about last week we had uh, taxi controversy. Oh, yeah. In Talladega. <laughs> and I, I got accused of not being fair. Oh. And that bothers me. Oh, man. No one has ever accused me of anything negative or bad <laughs> or unfair. Let me write and, this and, down. And that bothers me now. <laughs> but in all seriousness, they said, you didn't let our side get in. Well, now, when we open this phone line up, folks, you got to be fast. I don't screen the calls. We don't ask you who you are. Nope. Whatever call comes in, the engineer <coughs> says you got a call on one, two, or three. I take it. I don't know what you're going to say, mm -hmm. but I, I talked to Miss Connie, who owns a, a BC Taxi, and we're going to have the folks back with the other taxi service. Maybe after the first of the year, we're going to have one on one side and one on the other. We're going to let them tell you what they want you to hear, and then we're going to open up the phone lines, and y'all can tear into either one of them or both of them. Is that fair? In the meantime, happy Christmas, Merry Christmas, or whatever you have during this time of the year. Uh, Senator, yes. has anybody ever accused you of being unfair or controversial? I, I have heard that. Uh, <laughs> it, it proved to, there was no foundation whatsoever <laughs> to that <laughs> accusation after we kind of sorted out all the facts. So when you were right off, they was wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of redistricting in, in the in elections and so forth, uh, the city election comes up next year. Uh, if the courts were to rule against this redistricting, how would this affect the local election next year, if any? Would not. Okay. Has nothing to do with your local, or county, or municipal elections strictly at all. Strictly state stuff. It's strictly <clears throat> a state house and state senate that's, uh, that went before the Supreme Court. I believe I'm right, but I think uh, the city election is the fourth Tuesday in August of next year, I believe. I'm having people call me. Fairly regular now, we don't know what they got to do to run. I said, what are you going to run for? They said, we're going to run for council. I said, had me worried, I thought you were going to run for mayor. <laughs> but the mayor's race, the school board race, the city council race will come up next, uh, I think you probably qualify in July, 
Don't hold me to this, but we'll find out more. But I think it's July. And I believe the election is the fourth Tuesday in, in August with the runoff, uh, what, four, five, six weeks later. But if you're interested, if you're not happy with the mayor, you're not happy with the school board members, you're not happy with, with the uh, council, then <laughs> this is your opportunity to run and see how many friends you've got or ain't got. Mm -hmm. That's the best way to, to find out, and it's the best way I know to trace your family tree. You announce mm -hmm. for public office, and I guarantee they'll trace your history. If you've ever spit on the sidewalk, or if you've ever looked at a woman <laughs> wrong, or whatever, they'll tell it. Mm, mm, mm. Is that pretty well? Uh, I would say that. Covered. Is, <laughs> I tell you what, we had we had a pretty clean race. You did. We had a pretty clean mm -hmm. race. It was very straight the up. The only thing it was not negative. The only thing I heard of concern primarily was you being in St. Clair County, and we were having a senator from Tallulah County. How would this affect us? Could you be fair to St. Clair and Tallulah County and and the other county? Being from representing all these, uh, you know, that's, that's, that's a, the only. That's issue a I great have. question, but you know, previously in my house seat, I, I represented both Shelby and Saint Clair. I never had a conflict. That's good. And there are very few uh, senators or state reps that have only a single county that they represent. So it's it's new to us in Tyler County. Yes, We're having to adjust to right, it. That's right. Mm -hmm. But uh, we, I'm, I'm very impressed with you, like I said, since I've got to know mm -hmm. you. Of course, I knew Lance, your campaign man. He come to the barbershop in Birmingham. Matter of fact, isn't there Saturday, him and his wife and youngins, and, and we've been friends for forever, and, and uh, he, was, he was very high on you. Yeah, He's, he, Lance's a great guy, and, and hard I, worker. Here again, I, I just can't get over it. I call you or talk to you about being on the program, and you accept. Uh, it's, it's hard to get some politicians on this program. I don't know what, I, I, I take a bath. So I know it can't be that. No. <laughs> and I tell everybody I'm going to be respectful. I'm not going to try to embarrass. It's, folks that don't come on here gets embarrassed. Mm -hmm. We try to be very, very respectful and talk about the issues. And, and I just commend you. And, and you're Thank always you. welcome on this program. Need anything to be talked about or whatever, you always have an invite. Thank you. Appreciate it. You got a uh, Stampede Restaurant. If you've not uh, had a good meal lately, Stampede Restaurant in Tyler on Battle Street is the place to go. They're open seven days a week from about 11 in the morning till 7, 8 o'clock at night. And uh, they have some of the best food you can get anywhere. What, uh, uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> where was it? Oh, best, you get pork chops, steaks, uh, fried, grilled. We, we was up there, Mayor and I was up there the other night, and, and uh, I got some shrimp, grilled shrimp. I'm telling you what, it was good. Kayla said, do you want it hot, mild, or what? I said, just a little warm. Well, it was. <laughs> uh, I'm glad she didn't put a uh, uh, hot side. Uh, you know, when I used to go up there and get these onions, uh, what was it? Uh, Blooming onions. Blooming onions. And I say, you need to go buy some more pepper because you can't have none left in the store. You put it all on mine. It's, it's <laughs> but good. it's some of the best food you can get anywhere, mm -hmm. anyway. Get it cooked any way you want to. Folks, people say all the time, why don't y'all get something other good in town to eat at? We've got 25 or 30 places in town. Mm -hmm. There's no excuse for you not getting a good meal somewhere in Tyler Digger. They make a but great We appreciate Stampede. And, uh, all these other places are doing great, and, mm -hmm. and we appreciate you coming to Tyler Digger and shopping with us. Also, tomorrow is a council meeting. If you're interested in coming to the council meeting at 5 o'clock, going to be some hot issues tomorrow. I'm not going to tell you what it's about. It's going to be hot. But we do have one person who is wanting to buy a shopping center on Battle Street. It's up and running. But he wants to come in and, and buy it and redo it and do some other things to it. And that's all I'm going to tell you about it right now. You need to come out tomorrow afternoon and see what the council is going to be wrestling with mm -hmm. on this issue. Senator, let's talk about, uh, we've still got another, time flies when you have a good time. It does, doesn't it? Don't seem like it's been 60 minutes, 50 minutes, 30, whatever it's been. Uh, let's talk about, uh, during your term, ethics, uh, congressional, you talked about text and while drive. We didn't talk about that. Texting while driving. Texting while driving. That's been a hot issue. That has been a hot issue. Um, I started that bill, well, it took six years. I reintroduced it year after year after year. I, I, I use that as an explanation to folks when they come to me and they say, well, you need to pass this law and you need to do it now. Well, texting while driving, uh, banning texting while driving seems like a no-brainer <clears throat> to me, but it didn't to the legislature. 
So year after year after year, and, and I finally got the thing through, and it's the law, and it's it's done now. Good. Um, so it, it's it's out there. It's in effect. It also served as sort of a training ground for me. I, I've, I had every trick in the book pulled on me, I, well, at least that I'm aware of, uh, to send that bill off and to, to nowhere. So that bill gave me an opportunity to uh, really kind of learn some of the ropes and, and pitfalls in the legislative process. So I'm grateful to that bill. Mm -hmm. um, it was very popular. It, uh, legislation was polled by the people of Alabama. That bill, uh, before it passed, got the highest rating of any proposed legislation ever. It was 90% with the people. Fantastic. So sometimes the legislature is not an exact reflection of the wishes of the public, and that's a great example. Mm -hmm. But it's in effect now, and Good. I'm proud of that bill, proud Good. of that legislation. Don't forget rehab first if you need any kind of rehab. Rehab first in McGovern Health Care in Gaston is the place to be. Charlotte's used it. Her folks have, have had the opportunity to go there, and of course, uh, we've used the facility several times. Mm -hmm. And we can't thank the folks there enough for the way they treated us. They treat everybody that way. They, they treat you with care, concern, and uh, they, they don't let you come stay 21 days watching television. If you have a need and you go there, they get you up sometimes the same day, if not the next day, and get you back home as soon as you can. Uh, you're not going to just lay there 21 days and, and uh, baby you. They're going That's to get you up and get rehab. you prepared, get you back home. It's That's right, rehab. total rehab. And uh, we just can't thank rehab enough for being one of our sponsors. Without those those sponsors, that sponsor, and all our other sponsors, State Farm, CGs, Tally Funeral Home, all of our sponsors, Stampede Wrestling, we could not be here bringing you programs like with our senator and all the program we have, the taxi controversy and whatever. We appreciate our sponsors. Charlotte Green has got the best coffee probably in town at CG's. We do. Or the Dime a Cup. A uh, Dime a Cup. <laughs> the cup. Anyway, the, it's the very cup inexpensive. You don't pay $2 a cup. It ain't it ain't Starbucks or whatever. It's good or better than Starbucks and a lot cheap, a lot less expensive. It's delicious. Tell them about it right quick. Red Diamond Coffee. We brew it as we sell it. And um, I think you'll be real happy when you come by and enjoy a cup of coffee with us. And if you bring we'll your chat. own cup, she might let you have it a little cheaper. We'll chat. I like to chat. A lot of things coming up. Two hundred million dollars in the hole, according to the governor. At least two hundred million dollars in the hole. At least, and probably a lot more than My that. My goodness! And if you count the debt where we have borrowed money, we've got to pay it back. That runs it up even higher. Uh, we do have, and now that's in the general fund. The education trust fund is ho holding its own. I don't know if I'd say good shape, but it's not as good a shape as it was in 07, 08. But it's not threatened like the general fund is. The general fund has the Medicaid, uh, which is welfare for our, our, our medical services for people on welfare, is uh, really taking its toll out of that budget, as is prisons. That's about two-thirds of the entire general fund, and the general fund pays for everything but education it pays for. But Senator, through the years, yeah. people, I don't know where it's been popular, lock them up, throw away the key. That's exactly well, right. Well, when you do, folks, and I've been there, I understand how the system works. When you do, somebody's got to pay to feed That's me right. three meals a day and watch television and work out with weights and, and enjoy life. Well, that's not exactly true, but uh, it, it, somebody got to pay for it. We've got to pay for medical care. You put a man in prison when he's 20, 25 years old for 50 years, as he gets older, it becomes a nursing home facility. somebody got to pay for this medical care. That's right. There's going to have to be prison reforms, and I'm not saying turn everybody loose. Get there has to job. be an alternative to Get something like You know, our sentencing, <laughs> we've started on sentencing reform already, and it, it has it's shown that our actual conviction, our sending them to prison rate, has slightly decreased rather than increased. What's happening is for some reason they're not getting probation in a timely manner. They're not getting out as soon as could be 
Uh, so th there's, there's a quirk in the system there that's got to be worked out, but you're exactly right. We're using things today like drug courts and we're uh, finding uh, diversionary methods of uh, treating first-time offenders, particularly young mm -hmm. folks that get in trouble with drugs. So we're trying very hard to do this, but we do here in Alabama have the mentality exactly as you described, put them under the jail, throw away the key. And um, that mentality won't work, uh, uh, particularly when we're having to pay for it, and we're paying dearly, dearly. for it. One thing, that, and it will never happen in my lifetime, but if you started a jail system or incarceration system, that we won't let you do like the soldiers do. We're going to have a camp out here or whatever setting. You sleep in a tent. You eat your meals out of uh, sea rations. No amenities. Uh, got an outdoor toilet. Shower once a week, give you five years. You gotta serve six months on the ground, no air conditioning, no heat, no whatever. Serve six months, turn you loose, and if you like that six months, you screw up, Buster. You go back and get your five years on the ground. Now, that would be a deterrent. It won't ever happen in my lifetime. I don't think that'll survive the court. That's, what I was that's <laughs> cruel. Well, that's cruel, cruel and unusual. unusual. But well, the soldiers have to put up with it. The military has yeah. to live like that. Yeah, have well, to fight a war to make us safe, and nobody ever complains about that. Yeah. Oh, I, I understand that. I do understand that. But I would have hated to have to do it when I was. Yeah. You know. Anyway, it's good. It sounds good. What about uh, Medicaid? I see the governor sort of waffling. Well, isn't that interesting? I, I'm not so sure. Now I didn't hear his words that he actually said, but I read it in the paper, and let's assume that the paper got it right. I watched him on television. And he said he might be interested in a block grant from the federal government right. to cover the cost. Well, now that's a whole lot different than the uh, current way we have for expanding Medicaid. Uh, expanding Medicaid uh, is expensive. Mm -hmm. uh, it, you can easily add 300,000 people to the welfare rolls in Alabama. There's about a million on Medicaid now, a million out of 4.7 million population. So we're at 20% now. You want to add another 300,000? I don't know many people in this district that are interested in adding another 300,000 people to the welfare rolls. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're talking about. Now, if you can do it for free, uh, that could be another issue. Of course, the hospitals are very supportive of this, and the, many of the doctors are supportive of it. More money for them. Well, to some degree. That's, oh, yeah, and less loss for them. Right. So, no question, they're very supportive. But we'll see where the governor. Now, the governor did not, to my knowledge, come out and say he's for Medicaid I think expansion. I think he said, I know you think you understand what, you, what I said, but I'm not sure what you heard what I meant. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah? <laughs> well, <laughs> that's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> what, what about uh, the dollar tax on cigarettes? That keeps floating around. That does float around. And <clears throat> uh, I was chairman of the health committee for the last four years. And as chairman of the health committee, and knowing that usage goes down when the taxes go up. We, we, we designed that dollar for the health people, and then when it was coming in, your budget's all out of whack. Well, I'm not worried about that. If we could reduce uh, folks smoking, we're going to reduce the cost of health. Mm -hmm. There's no question about that. Mm -hmm. But we have a legislature with a strong mentality to no new taxes. And uh, well, you're 300 I million see, in the hole. I don't see anybody walking away from that. You either got two choices. All right. Cut out or raise money. You got it. In your household, when you're overspending, you got to cut out somewhere or get you a job paying more money. And you can't go rob a bank and or something. the state can't bankrupt. We got a caller here. All right. Hello, caller. Hello, caller. Hello. Yes, you got a, a question or comment for the senator? Uh, I had a comment concerning uh, the Larry's uh, question of statement about the type of prison incarceration. Yes, ma'am. Hey, I know who you are. Yeah, you, you probably you, do. You my neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> is this Larry? Yes, ma'am, this is Larry. Oh, okay. I was looking at it on TV and I didn't and you you're talking to somebody. Well, there's three of us here. Oh, okay. <laughs> you may have a little delay there. What's your question or what's your comment? Oh, I just wanted to comment on, on the fact that uh, what you mentioned about the harsh treatment in prison, put them in tents and all of that. 
that, uh, you know, that's been done out in Arizona, and I don't believe that it had a big decrease in their prison population. You may be right. And the other thing is, is that when you put them in uh, an area that's more outdoors and behind walls, you increase your staffing needs. You're right. And so that's not going to save any, any money in terms of staffing because you don't need more people to watch the uh, inmates. I appreciate you calling. I appreciate uh, you as a good citizen of our city and mm -hmm. a business owner. Mm -hmm. and, and the job you've done all these years. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I thank you for that. Thank you, ma'am. See, so, Mayor, I, that points out that it's a complex issue. Right. And there are no simple answers. Well, uh, uh, folks ain't going to prison wants that. But if you've got a son, a daughter, you or your wife, whatever, you don't want that. <laughs> it's according to whose ox is being Yeah, right. Uh, what agreed. about, uh, we're about out of time. Can I get you back? One of these days, real soon, we'll come back. We'll take we'll up come where back. we left off. This has been this has been so much fun, and I well, appreciate the invitation I told you be coming nice over to here. You. And you <laughs> have been remarkably nice. We got about three minutes or so, uh, and it probably will never happen in my lifetime. Why can't we come up with a consumption tax? Do away with income tax completely. I like that idea. And if you spend a dollar, you pay ten, fifteen, whatever. Oh. But but you that making say you're making three hundred dollar a week, and they're hitting you for seventy five dollars taxes. You take that seventy-five dollar a week taxes home with you. More expendable in, uh, in, uh, taxes you have to spend, and you don't spend it. They say, "Oh, it hurts the poor folks." Poor folks don't go buy twenty thousand dollar cars, twenty dollar twenty thousand dollar diamond rings. If you don't spend a dime, you don't pay no taxes. Now I, the consumption take it off of groceries makes sense to me. Yeah, take it off. If of you groceries. don't if you don't spend right. it, you don't you don't. No. Exactly. If you don't have it to spend, and you don't get taxed. And the business people would not have to keep any state records. Right. Now, I realize you're going to cut out income tax folks' jobs, but you could take those people and, and phase this in over a period of three or four years and absorb them into your system. If someone quits, ease them into the system. And over a period of three, four, five years, you could have this completely implemented, and it'd work fine. No, it makes sense to me. But it'll never happen in our lifetime because it's too sensible. Yeah, there's a lot of resistance. There's a lot. <laughs> but if you could do this, a lot of people make their money off the complexity of the tax system. Uh, that's unreal. It's un but uh, all kind of stuff. Well, charter schools, Medicaid expansion, combined. Are they going to combine the budget, education budget, and general budget? budget? I don't think it would happen. I would like to see it happen. No, well, that's an unpopular position for some <laughs> folks. But right now, look, we've got two separate checkbooks. One of them has got growth funds in it, sales tax, income tax. The other one does not. This one is surviving, and this one is suffering, and and we can't move the money where we need it. It's like you got money left over from for your power company bill, but you don't have any money over here to pay your gas company. One thing that's helped right now is this gas has dropped almost a dollar. People's got more disposable income, right. that's and I think that's helping the economy tremendously right now during Christmas time. Boy, now, and if see, believe it or not. you get about a dollar and a half or two dollars yeah, a gallon. Two dollar gas is a mixed bag. It's great for the consumer. But, it's, but suddenly our shale exploration, which we're sitting on in Alabama, yeah. comes to a halt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so either way you go is wrong. Oh, I'm telling you. Can't have it both We've got ways. about a minute or less. All right. Look at that camera right there. Yes, sir. Tell the folks. Where, oh, lottery. Are we going to vote on lottery? Nah, we're not going to vote on okay. lottery. Okay. Where are we going to get the $300 million from? We're going to start by, uh, we're going to continue downsizing government. We've downsized, and that's the number of employees. We're doing it by attrition, not by firing. Uh, we've gone down by about 12%. We expect over the next, this next four years to probably go down by another 8%. That's a substantial cut in the size of your government. Uh, we are looking at tax loopholes now that have been put in over the last 40 years for special interest groups to see if those need to be continued or not. Of course, um, 15 seconds. My tax loophole is somebody else's uh, wise policy making. So, uh, but but we will do it. We'll come out of this. We always go into it fretting, and we always come out a winner. Thank you for being with us. Thank we'll you. We'll get you back. Thank you, Thank you for tuning in. See you next week for another edition of In the Interest of the People. Get